You're now tuning into the Who and How Club with your host, Eris Dejan. All right, so we are recording, and I just want to say shout out to everybody listening and watching uh, today on episode 23 of the Who and How Club. Welcome to the Who and How Club, ladies and gentlemen. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who's and How's of the world. And uh, this is our first uh, Zoom interview or conversation that we're having. Just uh, because of whatever is going on in the world right now, we can't really do it in the flesh with the people that we care about or want to be around. Mm-hmm. Um, so we're conducting our first me. our first Zoom meeting and we got Michelle uh, on our episode today. Shout out Michelle. What's up, Michelle? Hi. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Well, yeah. where I am, but here with you in the virtual space. To be there, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to, you know, have you as like our first Zoom meeting. We do know each other, so we're going to get into mm-hmm. like that type of stuff. So Michelle's not a, a full-blown stranger to Eris and the Hoon House Club. She's actually a club member, officially, mm-hmm. and a rampager, and we're going to get into mm-hmm. that. But just shout out to everybody, you know, surviving through this COVID. I want to send a big cheers to everyone. And uh, those people just continuing to stay positive, finding ways to still connect to people, being around the people that you care about, supporting them from afar and still tuning into the show and supporting us as well in the movement. So shout out to you and uh, shout out to Michelle for being with us today. Glad to be here. Um, any people you want to shout out? Anybody out there? I want to shout out the Rampagers, the Who and How Club. Like, I miss you guys. Like, I think that that's been a big change and I've had to kind of work around that. You know, like, as a writer, I feel, and as just as a person as myself, like, I find that I... I vibe off of everyone's energy, you know, like I really thrive off of it, you know, and sometimes I've had to put myself in situations like this or just even a social distancing kind of like writing um, to really get the juices flowing and encourage, you know, the kind of sharing that I want to do and really facilitate those like deep discussions, even for myself Yeah, to kind of go inward. Yeah, I, I can relate to that like wholeheartedly. And I, I miss Rampage as much as, you know what I mean? Like, I miss the group. Me too. Uh, and just the, you know, the ability to just be in one space together, mm-hmm. and feeling the energy and vibe in the air and feeding mm-hmm. off of that. For those who don't know, we're, we're talking about uh, Rampage, which is an event series uh, sort of component to the Who and How Club. And uh, it's a biweekly event series where we get together and we sort of, you know, we just share pieces of ourselves on the page. And Mm -hmm. with strangers, people that we've never met before, we just have deep conversations over some drinks and food and snacks and just connecting with people. And that's what the Who and How Club is about. So Michelle has been there since its inception. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just to come full circle and to have you. I I knew that I'd have you on the show eventually. Mm -hmm. Just so we could get to know you a bit thoroughly, even though I've seen you in person. Yeah. We haven't had that chance to actually converse just one on one. No, we haven't. Dive deep into who Michelle mm-hmm. is, and you know. Mm-hmm. So, do you want to maybe start off with maybe answering that that key question to the Who and How Club? Like, who are you? And who am I? Yeah. Um, I am a Christian, Christian woman that is a holistic nutritionist and a writer. Mm-hmm. Um, I wear many hats. Uh, there's so many parts of who I am that kind of like are so interesting to see together, you know, and, you know, sometimes I find myself constantly trying to show everybody all those parts of me. Right. And I've kind of come to this place where, you know, like you don't have control over what, how people see you. So it's best just to be as authentic as you can and just live in the moment, but also planning for the future and, you know, setting down the ground, the stones for the foundation of what you want to accomplish, which is like so difficult for me sometimes to be present, but be planning. Mm. It's, 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 it's a weird dichotomy, but it's, it's a nice sort of balance that I'm like learning all the time. Yes. 
uh, why would you say it's it's difficult for you? What part of it becomes difficult? Uh, because sometimes the things I want to do presently contradict what I want to do in the future, mm-hmm. right? Um, for on like a most basic level, like enjoying a piece of chocolate cake, right? But also wanting like you know to really look nice in a bikini. No, I'm just that's just you know some real and kind of like making peace with the fact that like I can have this piece of chocolate cake and that doesn't necessarily negate what I'm working towards um and just finding that balance even in a diet right so that's just something that I work with all the time so that and like even the busyness of everything and so we sorry hold on one second hold on dad doggy duties I am so sorry okay you do not have a puppy right yes 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 (laughs) what's your dog doing I don't even want to say it, but <laughs> I, had, I, I, I had to prevent a disaster, an almost disaster. Right? We'll talk about it after. Okay. <laughs> why, why right, when we're ready to record and everything, he's like going crazy up and down. He was resting the entire day. <laughs> and it's like he knows like dad's working no, right now. happening? Yeah. And he just wants the attention. Sorry, so sorry about that. Don't be sorry. Do, okay. let's, go, let's go back to the cake thing. Do you feel like... <laughs> Yes. You, I, yeah, you, you killed me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, like you said, it, it wouldn't negate. Like, like, don't you feel like you could still enjoy that piece of cake and still look fine in a bikini? Like, there's what, two does that look, what does that look like to you? So there's two things that I do. Yeah. One of them, so as a holistic nutritionist, I look at the body-mind-spirit connection, right? Because they're all, all involved in, in your health, right? Yeah. So one of the things that I do is like how you talk to yourself is so important. Your body can hear your emotions, can feel everything on a cellular level, right? So one of the things I do is I actually give myself permission to have something that I shouldn't be having. I don't even like saying that, but like, you know, Michelle, this is a piece of cake. Food is also for enjoyment, not just nourishment. And you're a very fit person. You know, you're this won't you know, challenge you say, your health. You say a very thick? Fit. 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 I'm fit, a fit. person, you know, like you work out all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I give myself permission to eat this piece of cake. Yeah. And that sounds so crazy sometimes, but like, you know, you just need to change the messaging that you're saying to yourself and your body. And it really improves your digestion, right? Think about it. If you're like, oh, I shouldn't have this piece of cake. This is bad for me. Your body is like, oh, I shouldn't have this either. And then you blow it up. And then you have indigestion and, and then, you know, your, your digestion's messed up. So even just allowing yourself and giving yourself permission is really important. So that's one thing that I do. Another thing that I do is I just try to make healthier versions of the things that I love the most. Mm-hmm. Right. So I've just been cooking with like oats. I've been making like a sweet potato brownie. That's like amazing. And personally, I find it better than a regular brownie. So just like a lot, if that way I can enjoy it a little bit more frequently. So you love, so you're into the fitness and stuff like that. Do you feel like there was, does this stem from like maybe a time where you felt like you were overindulging in, in oh, certain foods yeah. and stuff like that? And, you know, on, on the show, we get personal, right? So, so funny that you mentioned that. So, you know, there's so many reasons that pe- bring people into the gym. Mm-hmm. It's not just, I want to look good, right? Um, for a lot of people like myself, it's therapy. Mm-hmm. So... Going back to it, so talking about fitness isn't really just talking about fitness, it's talking about my life. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I got really intense with fitness, and it was a way of me coping with um, a really bad breakup okay. that I went through. I was with this guy for eight years. Eight years way too long. He should have only made it to like maybe year two. Yeah. Um, but we broke up because his we were dating for eight years and I received a package in the mail from his girlfriend of eight months and his girlfriend of eight months, just listen to this. This is real, my real life. She sent me a two inch binder with screenshots of all the text messages they had ever sent each other, color printed four on each side. She even went through it and blurred out names of people. She organized it with tabs with like the months And then she wrote a letter describing the relationship with like, um, he used to, you know, my mom used to ask him how he likes his eggs in the morning, all that stuff. And when that happened and I received that binder, I flipped through like maybe two pages. I was like, that's enough. 
blocked him off of everything because I was like, you know what? The only thing I have control over is the fact that I'm not going to react to this. I'm not going to have a conversation with you. I'm not going to listen to how you think that I wasn't enough. All that bullshit. I was like, nope, I have this proof here. That's enough for me. I'm going to close this, end this, bye. Yes. And then I was like on my way to losing weight. And at that point, I kind of... Sorry, on your way to what? I was like on my weight loss journey when that happened to me. So I had already decided to start you know, living a healthier life. Yeah, yeah. And then that happens and I use that to kind of keep me sane. And I became like extremely OCD about it. Like I would go to a restaurant and I wouldn't order anything before checking out the menu on my fitness pal to look at the calories and the fat. Yeah. Like very intense. I would work out like twice a day. I would do like an hour and a half of weights and I would come back at night and do like 45 minutes on like the Stairmaster machine. And that is not something I would ever tell anyone else to do or any of my clients like it was a very extreme way of living and sometimes I hold myself to that extreme I'm like you know Michelle used to drop like two two or three pounds a week like how come you're not bringing those same results and what's important to remember is that our life changes our body's always changing so what worked for you then isn't going to necessarily work for you now and that doesn't mean you're lazy that doesn't mean you're not working hard that doesn't mean that you're not a you know, a great, strong individual. Right. It just means that the formula is changing because your body requires something different. Yes. And that is like, you know, your, the communication and the relationship with your body will be always growing and always changing. And the more you tune into learning about what that looks like and what they're telling you, you can kind of figure out what you need to give your body. Okay. On that, let's let's rewind it a bit because I want to go back to who you are as well. Okay. And because all of this, this stems from things, right? And I, I like this. Uh, I can relate to some of the things that you're saying as well. Um. So, if like if let's say I didn't know you, right? Let's say yeah. we've never met, we've never been in the same room uh, together before. Like, what's the, what is the way that you would describe yourself to me, like me being a stranger, like if I never knew Michelle? at all aside from the things that you do and those titles that you gave yourself right a christian uh you know what 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 makes michelle what makes you from the inside out um i have a really big heart Mm. and sometimes that is a blessing and a curse (laughs) right? I kind of like lead with my heart. Yes. And I have to learn how to kind of, how do I keep myself, like express myself without giving myself away? I feel like, I feel like it's not a curse. I think we need to stop saying that because you, you'll always win. This is me just interjecting, obviously. Like you'll, Mm -hmm. you'll always win when you go with your heart and lead with your heart. You're right. No No matter what happens to you, in, You're right. in the effect of that if someone you know misuses that that yeah. piece of you or like takes advantage or whatever you have to always lead regardless because those people doing those things towards you it's their story you of should course. yeah it's not it's but, not a curse it's a it's a huge gift but, because not everybody could do it but it is like i it is a lot of cleanup after for me like the damage control after giving my giving either too much of myself or giving myself to the wrong person. Yes. The yes. aftermath is is really hard for me. Yes. And it's a transition period. And you're, ta- you're talking about after it might after have, giving, yeah, right. And someone might might have misused that. Exactly. That's what you're talking. About. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So I'd say I have a big heart. I would say I love to laugh and dance. Mm-hmm. That's like a really big important thing. And I am, I guess I would say. Look at you, look at you thinking about yourself. I'm just trying to think. I'm just trying to think. I I, I think what I'm trying to figure out is like, what is important? You know what I mean? And how, how do I want to connect with the stranger that is like imaginary and hypothetical? Um, think, Think about when you think about yourself and how, like, you know, like how, what makes you, you. How do you see yourself and how would you present that to somebody who doesn't know you, but let's say needs to know you? 
let's say this is the last person on earth and you know who can knows? i i'm gonna flip this and now ask you the same question <laughs> how would you how would you describe yourself um to a stranger i would say open mm -hmm. very open mm -hmm. i do my best to be you know not if i'm not open it's not because i'm afraid of being open it's it's maybe because like maybe i might have missed missed that opportunity to be mm -hmm. open maybe or like forgot to mm -hmm. to be but if an opportunity presents itself i'm not afraid to just you know i'm an open book you could mm -hmm. you could try to pick at me because i know i'm layered i'm confident in that mm -hmm. so i have no fear in like sharing something and someone taking that and using it against me because it might happen anyway but i still i'm here to share you know and be open mm -hmm. i think that's what i was created for mm -hmm. um, i love that and also i would say just you know i'm, I'm pretty self-aware as well mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's important yeah that's a that's as yeah that's as like uh that's like the foundation of who eris mm -hmm. is i would feel just open and self-aware but that self-awareness takes a lot it takes a lot of work like i'm not i'm not fully there yet that comes with growth right like you continue to learn things about yourself that's mm -hmm. why i like i like having conversations and why the club is called like the who and how because mm -hmm. it's like who are you how do you define yourself and how did you become the who that you are? Like what took you there? So you already had jumped into the how. So I, st I, I wanted us to just rewind back and focus on the who first. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to get into the how because mm -hmm. the how is so important on who we become mm -hmm. and who we are today and maybe connects to who we used to be. Mm -hmm. It's all about experiences in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, certain things that trigger, who, that change our personalities. Like, you know what? We need to cut this off from here because mm. from this stage moving forward, I need to adjust myself and be different or focus on different things and speak mm -hmm. differently, work mm -hmm. my body out differently, eat mm -hmm. differently, mm -hmm. have that self-control that I didn't have before, implement new things, etc. Mm -hmm. So those are the types of things I want to dive into with you especially. Um, but I was curious to know just how you defined yourself. So I would say that... I am a giver. That's mm. one thing I've learned about myself. Um, one of my love languages is gift giving. It's like one of my favorite things to do. Um, I love music. So like music is like, I'm such a moody, I can be such a moody person. So like, I love everything, but I'm very particular about when I want to enjoy certain things. So I'm open like yourself, but I have a, a specific way of envisioning how I would like things to go because I know that it's going to be you muted, you muted, you muted, I can't hear you. Can't hear you, can't hear you. Can't hear you. Is something connected to your... There, is that better? Yes, what happened? My AirPods are in another room and they decided to connect to them. Yeah, throw those out. <laughs> Hold on. Technology, man. I know. There, I removed it from my computer. Okay, okay. So I didn't know that the AirPods... Oh, yeah, obviously, because they're wireless. So they're yeah. Bluetooth. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. No, no, it's okay. You, But I felt like it just cut out something really, like... What did you say? <laughs> I don't remember. I think I was talking about... Ooh, um, the fact that I'm open to everything. Yes. But, but I am... Sometimes I can get a little tunnel vision on, like... I'm like, so I'm a Pisces, so my, my sign is a Pisces. So I am a huge daydreamer. Um, and sometimes I have something built up in my head already of how I'd like things to go. Mm. Sometimes I, it can be difficult for me to flow into and just kind of go with it. So that's something that I've been working on. And um, yeah, just in terms of, I, I, I like everything, but sometimes I like things in a certain mood or a certain time, like I'm specific. Yes what what um like what what happened in your life that kind of because obviously it stems from somewhere other than your sign or your characteristics mm -hmm. of your sign right mm -hmm. um what would you say in your life kind of drew you to that type of personality i think uh, it's to have that personality i think it's like a learned behavior from my parents mm -hmm. like my parents are definitely like like that as well they're very specific about how they want things done 
Yeah. They're very effective. Like they're so effective and I love it. And it's so great and it pays off in so many ways because I can see something or even just like looking at the way my parents do things. I'm like, wow, that, that's so smart. Like that saves a lot of time. That also, you know, it's preventing a lot of problems as well. But just because somebody, the friction there is if it doesn't go like that, there it's like upsetting mm. and sometimes i can be like that as well if i feel i feel like why wouldn't you just do it like this it would be so much easier like this but it's kind of like what's easier is also adjusting your attitude and knowing that it it's gonna get done and just relax yes yeah. <laughs> and everything is always figure outable and everything always works out sometimes we sometimes we really need to relax like patience yeah. Patience and life, mm -hmm. patient, having patience in life, like they go hand, to, hand in hand. Like, I don't think you could live a life without having patience. And patience is really just waiting one extra day, you know? Like sometimes we just, we just hung in there for like one more day. Mm -hmm. We'll see the results that we've been waiting for. But we want, us as people, like we want so much. We want things to happen when we want it, at the snap of a finger, et cetera, et cetera. But we have to master patience. I think that's patience. So key, patience key to life. is not waiting, but it is your attitude while waiting. Mm -hmm. So just because you're waiting doesn't mean you're patient. Because <laughs> if you're stomping your feet, if you're creating a, like a huff while you're waiting, like that's not patience. Yeah, you're just waiting. <laughs> just wait. Yeah, I get that. I get that. Yeah, it is an attitude and a mentality that you gotta have for that. Mm -hmm. I've been practicing, if we're talking about signs like being a Taurus, like we are, mm -hmm. we tend to be impatient. Yeah. But I think I've, I've been pretty impatient in my life. I'm, out, I'm only now getting to that, that, that point where I'm comfortable with just, just trusting the process kind of thing. What are things that make you feel really impatient? Like what are things that test your patience? It's a good question because it's not even about waiting anymore. You know, it's like, mm -hmm. I think people just <laughs> like, uh, let's see. I mean, like recently, like really just waiting for, like you want something, you know, mm -hmm. I'm big, I, I'm big on like wanting and not needing. And I write down a lot of the things that I want in my life, whether it's, mm the type of relationship I see myself in, mm -hmm. or uh, work, work-related mm -hmm. stuff, opportunities. Mm -hmm. And there's always been this thing in my heart that this knowing thing that I know I'm going to get what I want and what I've mm -hmm. asked for, mm -hmm. but I don't, none of us know when, mm -hmm. and I don't know when. So I'm going back to what you're saying about, like, it's not just about waiting, but the mentality and the, the trusting of the process. So mm -hmm. there have been times where I've been very impatient and it's it's worse when you know you're gonna get what you've asked for, yeah. but you don't know when, and you want it yeah. right now. You're like, this should yeah. be the time. Like I put yeah. my, I paid my dues. You know, mm -hmm. I went through all these bad relationships. It's time for a new one, a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, you yeah. know, like where, yeah, where I can feel. Yeah, I I know that feeling all too well. You know, I. I put, oh God, where is where are they? <laughs> yeah, like don't tell me I have to go through another bad one. Are you tell like mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So. You just start to question yourself and question the when. And like, that's another thing that's connected to the who and how club, like the who, what, when, where, why, how, you know, I want to mm -hmm. delve into those categories for each person that we speak to on the show, mm -hmm. because the when is very important. And in our lives, we don't, we never know when we know what happened, mm -hmm. you know, we know our past, but we don't know, we don't know in the, what's going to happen in the next hour. Mm -hmm. and those are like the mysteries of life, you know, but you have this gut feeling like, yo, you want something and you feel that it's going to come your way one day because you know what you deserve, you know your mm -hmm. worth, mm -hmm. you know what you've been through. Mm -hmm. Especially if you've hit rock bottom, you're like, the only place you could go is up. Mm -hmm. But when is up going to meet you? Mm -hmm. When are we going to collide? What do steps right? look like? You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm going to climb out of it, but like, what are the steps that I need to take to get there? And sometimes like your vision is really clear, but like, how you're going to make that vision come true is like question mark. Oh, here's a, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. No, no, here's a, here's a question. So okay. 
So you know how you just said, like, you know, how are you going to make this vision clear and all of that? Yeah. Do, do you feel like we have the power to do that? Or it, are our, stor- our stories already sort of written for us? So hmm. are we really making the vision clear? Or is someone, the higher power, universe, whatever, we're already, our steps are guided. Like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or is there like a balance somewhere? Like, we have the control over some things and then they take care of the rest? Or... We definitely have free will. And it's kind of like, remember that Goosebump book where you could like choose your ending? No. And you would like, do you know those books? So it's like a book where you... I know Goosebumps, yeah. Yeah, and you flip and it's just like, oh, if you decide to go on this, whatever. So I feel like God already knows. He knows our hearts. He knows our desires and he knows what we're going to do, right? Yeah. So he just kind of sends us like breadcrumbs and just kind of like tries to lead us in the right direction. Yeah. And depending on like what door we choose brings us to that other part. But like the end, the end destination, what he has for us is there, right? He has what he wants for us. It's, I believe just kind of like how long it takes us to get there or what journey we will, or what route we will take to get to that end goal. Cause looking back on even that breakup that I had, yes. there are so many other times that we should have broken up. And I should have let him go. I should have walked away. He should have not called me back. He should have walked away too. But I didn't want to listen to what God wanted for me. And he was but, just constantly. But is, it, constantly. is it, but is it that though? Because it's always, I had this conversation with someone yesterday. And it's yeah. always very easy to, to, to be like, woulda, coulda, shoulda. Of course, in retrospect, we all should have done differently than what we did or could have, et cetera. But what if, you were actually just meant to go through that. That was the plan for it to last eight years. And without you. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, I believe that 100%. Like that was not from that, like looking back on it, that relationship taught me wisdom. It taught me boundaries. Mm. Um, It taught me that I need to be my own person in this relationship and not just a girlfriend. Mm. Right. Um, it taught me a lot and I don't regret like some, sometimes I talk to people and they go, wow, that was like a waste of eight years of your life. No, it wasn't. It brought me friendships that I have to this day. Even my group of girlfriends came from that relationship. Right. Um, it just, even being able to sit here and have this conversation with you, it brought me here yes. and the ability to contribute to the who and how club, the ability to write, the ability to really like, no, like yeah, up. and like also now that I was there, I know that I'm gonna get better. I'm gonna get what I deserve because I was there because I I believe that I deserved that, yeah. and I wasn't able to get that. So it's crazy how our our just our experiences truly shape us, man. Yeah, when you like sometimes we're so busy living that we don't realize like how much we've sort of transformed in a way over mm-hmm. the years or over time, let's just say. Like if you really sat with yourself and thought about what you've been through and to see what you've survived through, let's say, made it out of. Mm-hmm. I mean, so majority of us should be more proud. Proud, exactly. We should be proud. Proud of ourselves. And, and I think that the more we do that, the easier we'll take it on our, on our present self. Mm. And the more faith we'll have in our future selves. Yeah, and then you'll also be able to deal with any future challenges very differently. Like, we have to self-reflect. We have to review, Mm -hmm. you know, like, sort of performance review your life. Like, the way they they do a performance review at your job or in your Mm -hmm. career, Mm -hmm. you should do that with your life. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. like, categorize certain parts, like your relationships, Mm -hmm. your friendships, your family ships, your self ship. Mm -hmm. and you know the decipher like just pick that apart a bit and assess Mm -hmm. it and say you know what maybe i had a four out of five here but i could i could this is what i could do to get to a five maybe in the future or something like a year from now but also like having that critical lens but being compassionate at the same time Mm -hmm. right because i can definitely do that too but then i you beat yourself up for like what you should have done right that's so what i'm saying review, yeah have that review and you're like oh what could i do better oh like i you know i wasted so much time I'm no sorry. we need to get that out of it. what like, i could have shoulda we need to let that go 
Because we we all could have, would have, should have. Every person on this planet (laughs) could have, would have, should have. And that's just us trying to, like, like you said, like, we're beating ourselves up Mm -hmm. and also trying to justify, like, of course, that's that's obvious. Mm -hmm. But it happened. It was meant to happen. What are we going to do with it now? Mm-hmm. Like you gain something out of trials and tribulations. Mm-hmm. You, you gain mm-hmm. knowledge. You gain new weapons mm-hmm. to go to that next stage mm-hmm. and fight a bigger dragon. But you're mm-hmm. more prepared this time. Mm-hmm. You, have, you have armor on, you know? Mm-hmm. So I'm with you. <laughs> Fuck. Forget what it could have, should have. Forget, Forget it. Forget it. We're, we're not going to think about what we could have done, should have done. Unless someone has a fancy time machine that they haven't shared with us, I don't want to hear it. Exactly. That That is for the time machine. Like, that is for you going back and changing it. Unless I could go back or we could go back. But even if I could, I wouldn't. Mm. Even when, if I could, I wouldn't. Is there, is there a moment in your life that you could think just right off the bat, a moment that you would go back to? Not just relationship-wise, just any time in your life. Is there something that you would go and um, revisit? So going back to that relationship, and I go back to it. I have, I'm, I have healed from it. It happened a while ago. Um, I talk about it a lot because it was just such a massive thing that happened. And, you know, I just want to share that story too because, I mean, if I can leave a relationship that was eight years where I got a binder received to my door and I'm, and I'm flourishing – Anyone can leave whatever's going on in the relationship. So, well, well, that girl had too much time on her hands. That's what I got. No, her. she was Staples VIP customer for sure. Like, <laughs> just the arts, arts, and, arts and crafts. Yeah, arts and crafts for did, Jake. She, did she work at Michaels? <laughs> <laughs> where, where did she work? So, um, that's whack. But anyway, yeah. so so when he started seeing her, I know when that was because going eight months back, I was at York University. And, you know, I'm a straight A student. I was doing communications and environmental studies. And, you know, I was just having like a quarter century crisis. Like I was like, what is what is this essay gonna benefit me from? What am I gonna do with this in my life? Like, where's this going? What's the point? And I was self sabotaging. So I wouldn't like finish my essays, I wouldn't finish my exams. And I was in therapy at the time and I shared that with her and she was like you need to share this with your partner she's like you need to find out if he's somebody that can support you through all this so I shared it with him and I hadn't told my family and friends I was so ashamed like it disgusted me that I was doing that doing what like failing and just like okay okay okay, yeah like that that is just not something that I was okay with so I shared it with him and he told me that we should go on a break. So that's when he started seeing the girl. So he told me we should go on a break. I just told you that I'm depressed and you want to go on a break. And he had gone through some depression as well. And during that time, I was like right there up front and center. So for him to do that to me, like that out of everything, and I've been through some bullshit with him. And at any moment, that should have been the time that I should have left him but I wasn't strong enough to do that. So I wish going back, I wish that I was able to tell myself like that I didn't need him. I didn't need to be with him. And that if he can't support me in my lowest moments, that I would be okay. That is something that would go back in time and tell myself. But I also don't regret not saying because then, the breakup would have looked differently, right? So I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. That was like honestly the best thing that happened to me. <laughs> and I'm really grateful for how that went down and and the support that I had going through that. Like my friends and and my sister really held me down, like so much so. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's something that I would go back to. So you would go back to that. I would go back to that moment. I, but I was, what? Why? Why, what, what, I, maybe I missed it. What about that moment would you want to revisit? Because I chose, I was, I chose him. I chose Stain because I felt like there was no other option. And I wish I knew that I was worthy to accept something better. And that if I was with somebody and they couldn't be with me in my darkest moments, then that is like cut. 
and it should have been a clear cut. And now I think I'm learning to like not cut people off so fast because I'm so good at it now. But um, like when I see bullshit, I'm like, no, I don't want that. And I, I didn't know that back then. And I wish I, had enough, I wish I had enough confidence in myself to know that I deserve better. Okay, so is there something in your life that, let's just say, like you wouldn't go back to do anything different. You would go back to experience in the exact same way. Like, is there something in your life that you could... I would change? No, that you wouldn't change. <laughs> just something in your life that happened and you're like, yo, I want to go back and revisit that and to experience it the exact same way. Just anything. Mm. What's something in your life? Well, it could have been yesterday, right? It could have been two years ago. It could have been when you were six years old. Is there something in your mind? Like, what's the first thing that popped in that was like, I'd love to experience that again? Honestly, maybe my, maybe my 30th birthday. Can you hear me? What'd you say? Sorry? My 30th birthday. Oh, 30th birthday. Okay. Yeah. It just okay. recently passed. Um, it was just filled with so much love, you know? And like, I was going through a rough time then. And, you know, I didn't know what I was going to do for my 30th birthday. So I like didn't make any plans at all. And one of my really good girlfriends was like, oh, I have, I'm going to surprise you with something. We're just going to go out. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> and they threw me a surprise birthday. And it was in that moment of being in her house, which we're always at with all the people that I loved. And I couldn't imagine anything better. You know, I always put so much pressure on turning 30 and I kind of wanted to go out with a bang. And I was just not at the place in my life where that was a smart decision. And I had to make the choice of like, make, make celebrating your 30th birthday, the year, not the day. Mm -hmm. So make that year amazing you know, in all the ways that you want to make it amazing. Yeah. And being in that room and having all those people around me, it was like all of them did their best to make that day special and to make me feel loved. Mm -hmm. And I can't ask for anything more than that, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm so lucky that I had people that love me to know that they wanted to make me happy. And, like, yes, that's beautiful. So I would definitely go back and just really, like, really relish and really be in that moment yeah and tell everybody there that i love them so much yeah and it was like the last to, to get together we were allowed to have before this whole thing went down right so even looking back on that hindsight too like i'm glad that i didn't do anything crazy because here we are right in COVID. exactly right? although so. even though for my birthday we all we all broke some rules <laughs> We were out and about, which is definitely a moment I would go back to. Like, I really appreciated, I appreciated, like, you and the crew, like, just putting mm -hmm. something together for me and just, like, I'm starting to realize as I get older, like, it's not just about me. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And, I, and I'm comfortable with that. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm about me all the time. So even mm -hmm. in moments, I'm sort of like, there's like a mismatch where, like, in moments that is supposed to be about just me, I make it about others mm -hmm. and I'm not afraid of that. Like I don't, yeah. I, I could, I could be selfless or like mm -hmm. maybe it's a bit of deflecting too. I get shy and, some, <laughs> and stuff sometimes, but mm -hmm. I don't mind sharing it. Like it's our, mm -hmm. it's our day. It's not just my mm -hmm. day. And even mm -hmm. like you said, it's for the year. Mm -hmm. We're not just, this isn't just a day thing. Like this no. should be forever. Let's celebrate all the time. I'm going to kill this dog. I swear <laughs> to God. I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to, but it's okay. no, we don't want Peter. We don't want Peter coming after me. But anyway, but yeah, it sounds like you're very big on like. I'm happy to hear that you, you know, you're you're still pushing. You're still going after. You know, but believe it or not, relationships are very. They could really shape you, like intimate mm -hmm. relationships. The time that you spend with the person that you love at the time that you're trying to build with that you're you've shared so much with time included mm -hmm. you know when those things don't work out it it can make or break you and for mm -hmm. some people for majority of us it breaks us in the beginning but it makes us later on but for some people and i'm glad that's not us it, it breaks us or it breaks them completely and they can never come back from it 
so I'm happy to hear that you you've made it out of a situation like that and you're you're mm-hmm. going this direction as opposed to like mm-hmm. you know like it has to you have to take something from it and learn from it and you have to apply or, it you or the apply lessons it. just keep repeating themselves right like and you know those look different so they might not be you know the same x that will come back or the same job or the same well, they'll come in a different version come in a different, different form. body yeah come in a different, different form yeah. and you're going to be forced to learn it and it gets harder and harder and harder you that's know, god the starts, worst god starts with a whisper in the hands of yelling and that's what happened with me that's why i ended up with a binder is you that think a, that you can try to break a, that up earlier is that because a bible is that a bible quote God whispers, then yells later. What? No, that's me. That's that's my relationship with him. That's my relationship with him. And now I know. I hear the look. Like that one. I like that one. I like gotcha. that one. I like gotcha. that one. All right. I'm going to turn there. Yeah. And so, it, it'll get worse in different forms because you yeah. haven't stopped. And I guess that's the free will you're talking about. Like we have the, the ability to stop certain things or continue mm-hmm. with things, et cetera. So, uh, yeah. I mean, I've had my share of relationships too, so I, mm-hmm. I, a lot of the things you're saying, I get it. But we have to be able to apply what we've learned, mm-hmm. like I said, so we could be ready for the next best thing. But there have been times where you're like, "Yo, I've seen this before," or "Yo, I've mm-hmm. seen you, mm-hmm. I've seen you before," like mm-hmm. like a deja vu, right? Another so, thing too is that, like, I feel like sometimes God tests you on what you really want by sending you what you don't want to see if you'll like fall for that. So, like, he'll just, like, you know, oh, you're praying on a husband? Let me just send you a little person that does not want that at all. And if let me see if you entertain it, because I want to really see if that's what you actually really want. Mm, so I'm ready, like, mm, you for want me. me to say, and I see it, and I'm like, mm, you want me to say no to this? You want me to say no to this? So I will say no, because I'm, I'm serious about what I'm praying for, you know? So I want to show you that I'm serious. So it's okay. You can keep it. Next. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are little testers, you know, mm-hmm. like, to see if you're actually ready or not. Mm-hmm. And that's for anything. That's for anything. Like, let's say for for jobs, like you'll get like a hundred, let's say just ten job interviews, and mm-hmm. each organization or whatever position, you, you're like, oh, maybe this is the one. Maybe this is the one. Mm-hmm. And it's not the one, but you keep getting interviews. So you're like, God, what are you trying to show me here? Or like, you know what? I I really didn't want to work for that. He's preparing you so you can ace the interview that you actually want. Yeah, the one that's on its way or like maybe you need to assess like am I really just trying to run away from Mm -hmm. where I currently am just Mm -hmm. to what? Like just because I can't put up with certain things anymore. Like there are are lessons in every movement we make Mm -hmm. on a day-to-day basis Mm -hmm. and it's important to assess. You got to live. You got to assess. You got to live. You got to assess and live like Mm -hmm. back and forth. Mm-hmm. I don't think I don't think you can live without assessing, and I don't think you can assess without living. Like that's my Agreed. new acknowledgement of life mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. And maybe that comes from like me being in my head a lot, but I no, that's very true. You ha- you very have true. to. Who's yeah. gonna assess? Who's gonna assess? And you can't like you know like sometimes you have to throw the rule book out the window because like it just doesn't match up to what's currently happening in front of you. And just mm-hmm. also trusting that when that happens, you have the tools in your tool belt. And yes. you've been preparing all along to handle the situation in front of you. Okay, so we know who you are. Okay. We know a little bit about what you do, what you've sort of been through, mm-hmm. and where you're at today. Mm-hmm. Where, if I were to ask you where you came from in your mind, how would you answer that? Where, where is Michelle from? And it's deeper than I would, outside of like eth- ethnicity or the, yes, yes, in, yes. in Toronto where you live. Like, where, I would, where is she from? I would say... Where I'm, does she, hold on. Where does she come from? I come from love and hard work. So, um, you know, my parents love really hard, and I love really hard, too. And I see it. Their love language is more acts of service. So they do the most to show you that they love you. Um, and, you know, my parents came, like, they came to Canada without anything in their pocket. Like my dad literally came on a boat. He tells us a story about how he was on a boat and how he had to eat rice that wasn't fully cooked. <laughs> and, you know, the struggle of that. And he came here with literally nothing in his pocket, worked for $5 an hour while sending money back home, while learning ESL at night. And 
eventually built up everything and sent me and my sister through school. You know, we're in our third house now. He just brought a brand new Lexus, you know, like he has his own business. So he's doing really well. So they kind of showed me the value of hard work and that if you really put your mind to it and you work hard and smart, you can get what you want. Mm. So that's where I'm from and love, you know, so I've been, you know, lucky to have their love. And because I've been loved like that, I'm able to love people the way that I do. Mm. And love yourself. Yes. Yes. That's actually something more I've had to learn myself and have, I'd have, I've had to teach myself and really bring that back of like, you can't love others unless you love yourself properly. Very true. But it takes so much time. Like imagine, Mm -hmm. imagine like, like being in relationships at like 17, 18 saying that, Mm -hmm. you know, you love somebody and it's like, (laughs) I, I, we don't even know ourselves at that mm-hmm. stage. I don't, I don't even like to use the word age anymore. Like I say stage. Mm-hmm. Because for me, like age is just, it's truly, well, it, it, one day we'll talk deeper into this, but the way mm-hmm. I look at time and like these numbers and stuff like that and what this construct, mm-hmm. I, I don't believe we're the age that they say we are. I don't even look at birth. Like they say we're bored when we come out the womb, but we're still alive when we're in the womb. So I don't understand yeah. why day one for me is when I come out my mom, but mm. that's that's a stupid concept in itself. But mm. let's just say 18, 17, those teenagers that they, mm. you know, it's it's hard to fathom like being so in love and like you don't even know yourself or know that person that you love, you know, but eventually you grow into like this version of yourself. Mm. And you think like, okay, I know myself a bit more, but it's still not it. Like Mm -hmm. there's so much more to explore about yourself Mm -hmm. and you're going to grow and your love is going to change. Your perspective Mm -hmm. on things are going to change. And I think that that's Mm -hmm. one of the most exciting parts about life. Mm -hmm. So when we're reflecting on our past, it's like, damn, we kind of, if I were to go back and and I had the ability to change things, I think I would have taken a bit more time to do Mm -hmm. things. Because mm-hmm. I rushed a lot of things I got just for that experience, you know? Me too. So, yeah. But we're growing. Mm-hmm. We're blooming into like these beautiful souls. And like mm-hmm. when we were kids, we saw people our age today. Mm-hmm. Like, yo, those are the old guys or old girls or whatever, you know? But mm-hmm. we're there now. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. we're doing things a bit differently than they did. So, mm-hmm. taking time to ourselves and just pushing ourselves, being limitless and loving ourselves, taking the time to do that, not rushing anymore, mm-hmm. not being stuck in something that we just can't get out of. Mm-hmm. Like even, even if it means we have to be alone, mm-hmm. happiness is, is the priority. Self-love, mm-hmm. self-care, caring for the things that are really important. That's the focus. Mm-hmm. Not trivial things, not relate. Like, mm-hmm. You could get a boy. I'm sure, Michelle, you could have a boyfriend any day. I could have a girlfriend any, but we don't want just anybody, no, right? No, we don't. We don't want we don't. anybody. We, we want... Because we've had that, and it, and it was miserable, and it didn't work. And, like, you know, like, and just, like, the purpose, and I see you doing all these wonderful creative projects, and I have so many aspirations for myself, too. And when you're with the wrong person, it's such a distraction. Mm. And that's why my parents were so against me having a relationship at that age. Is, and looking back on it, it was distracting. It you know? was. It yeah. was distracting. Like, I would, we would be fighting, I would be out, and that night became wrapped into me fighting with him. And my friends became people that were constantly there for me when I was, being, when I was going through a fight. And, like, one thing that I had to reflect on was, like, was I even a good friend to my friends? Because I felt they were constantly being my friends. Mm. Because I always had a problem with my boyfriends. Mm. they always had to be somebody listening to me and I couldn't just be a happy friend for them Mm. I couldn't just be like you know enjoying this moment with them no I'm hanging out with you because my boyfriend and I are fighting and I'm upset not because I genuinely want to spend time with you which I did obviously but the the purpose was different yeah right so even looking back on that it's just kind of like that robbed me of the friendships that I was having with my friends because I wasn't present I was upset all the time Hmm. yeah 
that's a perspective because yeah you have to put yourself in other people's shoes your your friends like mm -hmm. who knows if when you call them they're like oh this bitch is calling again about that like, guy fighting about him this, just, this, they, just, they just worked it out two days ago why uh, nah. so i get that i get that. yeah hmm. Hmm. you got me thinking about a lot one, <laughs> one day we're gonna have a relationship only let's uh, do it episode mm -hmm. just to talk about relationships like those intimate stuff and all of that i think that's a good idea but because it's the first time you're on the show obviously we're covering these the basics and mm -hmm. other than, you know maybe we could do like a part two like a follow-up mm -hmm. obviously um the conversation never ends that's the goal with the show like i mm -hmm. i want to invite people that i've already spoken to back and spoken with you know it's not just about me i'm not interviewing you we're just having a conversation and getting to know each other so that hopefully someone listens back to this or watches this and can learn something mm -hmm. or relate back, relate to it based on what they're going through in their lives or have been through, you know, that's the goal with this. So first off, I just want to say another, send out another like shameless plug and mm -hmm. thank everybody for listening to the Who and How Club and continuing to support the movement, um, the blog and the podcast itself. Rampage, an event series that brings people together to write uh, do creative writing exercises and share their de deepest fears and experiences that they've been in with strangers. Hopefully that'll be coming back soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but keep a lookout for that or just go on our page at who, how club on Instagram. Um, and you could see, you know, pictures from past events and stuff that we've done and the flyers. You can also go on the website, who, how club.com just to, check out what, what we're doing, what we're writing about and all of that jazz and information on latest episodes like this one, which will be posted uh, either tonight or tomorrow. Um, why would you say, why do you do what you do? When you think mm. about the things that you do right now with like your fitness stuff and all this positivity that you're spreading, um, what's the why attached to that? Like why? Um, there's a lot of reasons, but I think just to kind of sum it all up is that, you know, God placed that purpose in my heart. He put that in me to share. Right. So I just feel like some of the things that I share with people, I kind of wish I knew growing up. Mm. So I wish that I loved myself more. I wish I knew what boundaries were. I wish that I built my self worth before attaching it to the idea of being valued as a girlfriend or, you know, somebody that was a worker or a student or a daughter. Like, I wish I knew what that was on my own first and just kind of to be a light for other people, right? Like other people's lights have brought me to where I am. So I feel like I need to share that as well. <laughs> Did you say lights? Yeah. Light. Like the other light. People, yeah. Every, yeah. Other people have been a light for me. So yeah. Yeah. I'm just happy you said that. That's good. We have yeah. to be the light. We have to be the light yeah. that we want to see, you know, and mm -hmm. give back. Like what you're saying or how you describe that is to me is like giving back, you know, mm -hmm. what's the point of going through all the things that we go through or learning the things, the, the challenges, et cetera, if we're not going to share them back. We are meant to share. We are meant to share. Exactly. Why do you think people are so afraid to share even today? Um, I think that it's something maybe that we don't do like they're not used to sharing right so even like the whole idea of like um being an only child right mm -hmm. even emotionally being an only child mm -hmm. of like not having that reciprocation of giving and receiving yes. i think that some people also operate from a sense of lack so they feel that if they give they won't get it back and it doesn't work that way it's like an energy right so even with money even with giving so one thing that i tell myself too is like what I have is not mine. It does not belong to me. It is God's. And he's given it to me. And I have to have faith that if I give it, he will be the one that will supply all my needs. Right? And, you know, even when it comes to something, even just like as simple as like my car, right? Yeah. Like he gave me that car. And I kid you, that's another conversation that we're going to have. He gave me that car. So, you know, it's up to me if I can offer a ride to somebody, if I can mm. help somebody, or if I can be a vehicle to, you know, bring something together, then I do that willingly, right? And I don't think God wants me to be lost in those, in those tiny little details because he's the one that will deliver all that and make everything figured out. I just have to carry it out, mm. right? So if I have that within me, 
within myself, I feel like compelled, I have to do it. Hmm. Where does, uh, you know, your, your, your experience with God stem from? I know you said that you're a Christian, mm -hmm. um, but, you know, religion aside, let's say, or even if it is a part of that, you know, mm -hmm. wh where, where does that come from in your beliefs and stuff like that? I think it was like just reaching those dark moments and just feeling like, what's the point in this? Like feeling lost and forsaken and being forced to be with him mm. and trying to hear what he wants from me. And then, you know, have those magical moments where he delivers and it all makes sense. And, you know, I take those moments and I'm like, this is this is the power of his grace. This is what he can do for me. Remember this when you're in another situation again and you doubt him mm. because he will deliver for you, right? So it's it's kind of like for the first time losing weight, right? Or or trying a vegetable that you haven't had for ever and you make a really yummy recipe and it's delicious and then you feel really good. You take a really nice poop <laughs> which is like so great for for your mood and then it just kind of encourages you to do it again yeah <laughs> right so you just kind of need to take that little grain of salt that little breadcrumb that he gives you and take that into the next situation yes. and you know for me it's kind of like the 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 stinging feeling of being of doing what he asks you to do or doing what you know is right is a lot easier to deal with than the backlash and the burn from not doing what you should be doing. And I keep that reminded in my head when I want to take the easy way or I don't want to do what I should be doing. Like it's worse when you don't do it. So I just kind of condition myself that way negatively and even positively. Right. So that keeps me from doing bad things and it encourages me to do good things. <laughs> it's all about the feedback loops. Because we're humans, right? We're not perfect. And we need to see the proof of concept. Some of us, yeah. <laughs> no, none of us. None of us. Um, yeah, we need a proof of concept. So you just kind of need to, like, take that photo, take that memory, and just, like, remember that and hold on to that when you feel like giving up. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's snaps. We snap, we snap at Rampage. I miss the snaps, too. That's right. No, I've been commenting on your photos with snaps. <laughs> you need a snap emoji. I'm like, yo, this fire. <laughs> Do we have a snap emoji? Because no, we don't. That's we don't. I, I appreciate I appreciate you sharing that perspective on God. You know, like some people, you know, like they hold that those experiences very dear to them. Like I truly feel like there's no generic way of looking at God. I think we all experience the higher up our creator however you wanted to you know title that that thing mm -hmm. uh, in many different ways and i think it's all based on our experiences with that that same thing so uh mm -hmm. thank you for expressing it in a way where it's like not like force feeding or anything you really just you're speaking from your what you've experienced you know mm -hmm. and that role that god mm -hmm. has played in your life so i can again i can relate to the things that you're saying so thank you mm -hmm. Um, I wanted to, sorry, did you want to share anything else on that? On um, yeah, like, thank you. Thank you for acknowledging that in me. I, I appreciate that. And I take that approach because I don't, I don't want people to feel like I'm like a Jehovah's witness being like, here's my pamphlet. Like, no, can you, like, I don't want it to be like that. Yeah. And I feel like that is you know, somebody that is in sale, that's been in sales for 10 years, it's like how you approach things is so important. And I want to be in, I want to encourage people to, to know him. And I don't want to be forcing it. But like, you know, a lot of a lot of problems are solved just by knowing who he is, because then mm -hmm. you don't worry, right? If yeah. you know who God is, you won't be fearful, you'll have faith, because he takes he takes care of everything. The same way that he's brought us through this, there's no way he hasn't handpicked and grown a person exactly for you. There's no way he's, he has that all figured out. So when you I, know that, I hope so. <laughs> no, you know what I say? Sometimes I tell myself, you know, like my friend tells me, you know, God's just picky when it comes to you. And my man is in a slow cooker. 
He's not a McDonald's French fry. He's a slow cooker, you know, braised beef that's, you know, stewing for like 24 hours. So, and he's going to come out nice, fine and tender. So just got to be patient. <laughs> do you, do you, um, do you, <laughs> do you write down, do you write things down like that? Like what you want to see? Like I write down, a lot of affirmations you know like I'll start, I'll, start, I'll start the page with like an i am and take it from there similar to some of the exercises we've done at Rampage, mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. like you know things i want to remove from my life or rebuke mm-hmm. or um mm-hmm. you know things i just see for myself like do you write things down like that i so i did an exercise um i'm also big on abram hicks law of attraction mm-hmm. and i wrote down all the things that like a couple pages of what my ideal partner looks like. So even down to the feelings of like, sure, yeah. I love the way he gets along with my family and I get along with his. I love how good he is with kids. Yes. I love that health is important to him. I love how much fun we can have together doing nothing. I love that we can spend time together in silence and it's not a big deal. Right? Like things like that and just really get clear. And I think that's what a lot of people miss. And then they just accept. You have to be very specific. They get a whole bunch of bullshit and they're like, oh, great. There's a penis perfect let's pair up and then you you wonder why you're miserable do you have any standards you know what i mean like even when i'm looking for food that's how particular i am like i am so particular about even the noodles i'm getting and it's just like that's I'm, I'm a little extreme that way no but, but of course if you're specific in those things like when you, pr- when you purchase a pair of shoes you know why not in the person why not get the black say? shoes that you want right yeah. so yeah when you get clear on what you want out of your partner and then, but like realistic, I'm not talking about like, I want a six, two, he's making six figures. He's a house with a white picket fence. Like that's all bullshit. Um, and I think that you should be able to deliver on what you're asking for as well. So I think we need to check ourselves on our list. Oh, someone that's fit. Okay. Are you fit? <laughs> like, is, is that something that you're doing? Otherwise you might not be able to get it. So, but being clear on what you want, you're more likely to get it because you know what it is. Right. Mm. I'm with yeah, you that's, on that. that's my rant. <laughs> oh, no, no, I'm with you. I, I would hope that people can understand that, like, there is power in writing. And you could mm-hmm. create, mm-hmm. you could create, you know, this kind of goes back to what I was asking about, like, if you feel like our steps are guided already or do we have a choice and whatever. If we're going to, if we're going to land under that, that spot where, like, we do have some sort of choice, you know, I do believe that we have powers and we could shape certain things uh into Mm -hmm. our into reality you know and writing things down is one way of doing that and creating what your life can look like with the people you're around the type of person you want to be um because Mm -hmm. after you write something down you also have to just reread it you have to implement it it has to be automatic in your brain like reminding Mm -hmm. yourself like this is who i want to be how i want to be this is who Mm -hmm. i want to be around and how i want to be around them or how i want them to be around me Mm -hmm the types of friendships I want, the type of job I want to do. If you want to work for yourself, the type of car you want to drive. Law of attraction, of course, you know. But then I start to think, like, maybe God already knew I was going to make this list today anyway. So I always battle with that. Like, yeah, maybe I have the free will, but someone knows that I'm, this is what I was going to do tomorrow. Like, God knows I was going to be. Just because he knows doesn't mean you don't have free will. Mm. Just because he knows doesn't mean you don't have free will. The same way that your mom knows you really well, but she's not gonna, she can't dictate what you do, right? But if, okay. So, okay, okay, I like that. So, so for example, you're, so for example, let's take yeah. another example. Let's see your dog, right? Your puppy, right? You know what he can get into, right? So you put like child locks on certain things, right? So you're keeping him from doing that, right? Yeah. Because you know that he's, he's more likely to get in there. Right? Yeah. That's because you know he has the free will and you're just keeping him from that. So it's like a little similar to that. Right? <laughs> you kill me. You kill me. <laughs> okay, so you're saying, okay, so you're saying that God knows, but God's not. He knows. He knows everything. He's not, but he's not controlling the situation. He's allowing us to. He's allowing us. But I think that he kind of like either gifts us like angels or gives us signs Some or guidance guidance, guidance. Yeah. our he's steps are guided like, yeah yeah and he's just kind of like okay i know that you need to kind of 
build up to making that choice. Mm. So I'm going to give you these things to get the you. tools, the tools, yeah. and the, the guidance. Yeah. And, stuff like that. and then it also depends on your relationship with them. I feel like a lot of people are just so unsure about what mm. God wants. And my answer to that is you need to come closer to him and you need to spend more time with him. You know, my mm. pastor said that prayer is not us telling God what we want because he already knows it's our ability to listen to what he wants for us and say it back to him. So like, if you're unsure, that means you're not spending enough time listening. Yeah. And it's not going to be like, please walk down this way and make a left at, you know, 90 degrees. Like it's not going to be like that. It's going to come, it's going to come in different forms and different ways. And you just need to be very clear. Th- that's twice you've done this Buzz Lightyear voice. <laughs> where, where does <laughs> You're killing me. Because I think that some people feel like it's supposed to sound like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And it's not. Yeah. Well, I, I don't even just refer to God as he. Like, sometimes I say they or she. Like, I think it's mm-hmm. everything. I think the earth. Like, these mm-hmm. things were here before us. You know, the trees, mm-hmm. the animals, all of that. And just, like, all the vegetables and roots and things that, like, keep us healthy. Like, that's one of the things I'm so grateful for. Like, the air. You know, God, really put, God really put ginger on this earth to be like, you know what? Someone's going to have a headache or be nauseous. You know, I'm going to put this root here and then they're going to boil it, juice it, put it in food, make stir fries, and it's going to be lit. And then I'm going to put someone here that's going to discover that. And then he's going to share with all these people. Like, that is amazing. You know, you could literally heal from the earth, from all the things that you eat or don't eat. And it's, it's unbelievable that he thought about all that for us. And he did that all for us. Like, that's so, that's so amazing. God's an artist. So, man. God's an artist. He, he's an artist. He loves other artists such as yourself. So I hope everyone watching remembers that. Anyways, uh, enough yeah. gushing. Yeah. Of- <laughs> No, we're celebrating. We're celebrating. So let's get into the let's get into the Ask the Club segment, uh, okay. which is where you know any guests that we have on the show, uh, they bring some questions to the table as well. Anything that they might have wanted want, want anything they might have wanted to ask me or ask the club. Post questions to the listeners. You know, anyone could jump in. If you hear anything today, ladies and gentlemen, um, that you want to sort of give an opinion on, feel free to touch base on you know, Instagram or on Twitter at who how club on all social media, feel free to send an email who how club at gmail.com and you could share your comments or leave a comment below on the YouTube video. Uh, if you want to, you know, challenge anything that we've said today or share your opinions or any of the questions that Michelle's going to present now. And let's just start the conversation and build a community around that. So hey, welcome to that. I have three. Ask the club. You have three. I have right. three. Ask the, the first one is for you. Pardon the me? first one is for you. Uh oh. Go ahead. And I, I guess don't everyone know. else can answer too. I don't. It, I don't know these questions. I don't know these questions. Just the preface. He doesn't know this question. I wrote this today. Okay. So, um, you mentioned forgiveness is something that you're working on. So I was with you when we talked about forgiveness at Rampage, and you're like, "It's overrated. You don't need to forgive to move on." And you went on this whole rant. And I'm just there, like, what? I'm like, my friend doesn't believe in forgiveness. Yeah. So, so my question is, you mentioned forgiveness is something that you're working on. Correct. What about forgiveness is difficult for you? Um, figuring out whether or not it, it is necessary in order to move forward. Why do there. you think it's not necessary? I don't know if it isn't or it is yet. Like I'm still in that stage of figuring that out. Like, do I need Mm -hmm. that in order to move forward? Is that something that's a necessity or can I still operate under Mm -hmm. this, this thing that might've occurred or this person or being the same room as them or I'm I'm using that as an example of something was done to to harm me. Let's say, let's say someone did something to me and you know, yeah, there are two ways of dealing with it. Do I forgive and let it go? Or do I react by getting back at them out of spite? That whole two wrongs don't make a right thing. Or do I just accept, mm-hmm. you know, and still continue to be me, learn from that, etc. I'm figuring those parts out. Mm-hmm. But, but I think with just depending on forgiveness in order to move forward, like you could forgive and still not truly be, you know, not really forgive, quote unquote. So I think we need to define that. So that's where I was coming from, where yeah. it's like overrated. Like, that's not the end all be all forgiveness. I think forgiving yourself as well. Yeah, forgiving mm-hmm. yourself is important too. Like, 
mm-hmm. you know, not being going back to what you were saying earlier about not being so hard on yourself. I've lived a life where I've beat myself up a lot out mm-hmm. of like mm-hmm. guilt, out mm-hmm. of things, out of resentment, out of things that I just never let go or accepted, you know? And mm-hmm. I think forgiving yourself, I'll forgive myself before I forgive anybody else is what I'm trying to say. If I were to focus, if, if, if forgiveness played a part in moving forward that much, it would be forgiveness mm-hmm. for, of oneself mm-hmm. more so than forgiving something external. You got to mm-hmm. forgive yourself first. And I think that's a true yeah. way Agreed. of moving forward. Not, not the external. I don't need to forgive you to move forward. I think I need to forgive me and forgive my role in certain things more so than ever. You're external. You're living your life. Your story is that. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't need to forgive you. Who cares if I forgive you? No one needs to know I forgive you. No, no one needs to know that you forgive you. I've forgiven a lot of people that haven't told them that I've forgiven them. Yeah. It's relevant. Because my me forgiving them is for myself. Yes. Right? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I think that like I think that we think that forgiveness needs to happen right away. I think that's a mistake that we make. True. I think that we need to understand that forgiveness can happen. You need to just want to forgive them. And that will just figure itself out in time. That will be I a like, part of the million. I like that. I like that. Wanting I've never, to forgive someone. You have so, to want to forgive them. So you yeah, have to say... It's okay. okay to not want to forgive someone. That's what I'm trying to get at. It's okay to not want to. We cannot just feel like, you know... I that think that is okay. I think that is okay depending on the circumstance and the amount of time. Nah, but I think that forgiveness should be in your heart. Nah, fuck them. Yeah, fuck them, but like you need to forgive them. Okay, I'm just, no, you, no, you don't need I to. I do. I do believe that you need to forgive people. I disagree. It's not my job. I don't think it's my job. It's above us. Like, I feel like it's above us. It it's is. Like, it's you know who's my... above us? God. And he's telling you to forgive. God, God will forgive them. God will forgive them. God will forgive them and he put it in your heart. He wants you to forgive them too. I can't control my energy. My energy has its own That's personality. You. Yes. My energy has its own personality. Don't do me wrong. Don't, don't do me don't wrong. Talk to me like a Taurus. Talk to me like a Christian. Okay? Sit down. <laughs> I'm telling you. Like, I'm telling you. Forgiveness is the key to everything. I'll believe you on that. I'll roll with it just for today. With everything. That doesn't mean it needs to happen right away. And yeah. I think that it's a, journey, it's a different journey for everyone. And it looks different for everybody in terms of how to forgive. But I think that needs to be the goal at the end of the day. Question two. Question two. What is a lesson you have had to learn more than once? Why were you resistant to learning that? That's a question for everyone, not just necessarily just you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to focus on the selfish aspect of who I am. Because okay. I'm not afraid to admit that, that I've been very selfish in certain, certain mm-hmm. you know, instances and stuff like that. And I put myself over other people mm-hmm. in many times because I felt like it was time for me to do so because there were times where I just didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't realize that me being so selfish were, was harming people who who were dear to me or who didn't deserve that type of treatment. But mm-hmm. it was just the phase that I was in in my life, you know? Yeah. Um, so there are a few times where I've been kind of selfish and I, mm-hmm. the outcomes of that have never been positive. Yeah. Um, but I do feel like my selfish phase is, I'm, I, I think there's, I, I can't remember what, if I posted this on Instagram or had a conversation with someone, but I do believe that there's a good selfish and a bad selfish. Agreed. I agree. And there were a few times where I had that bad selfish phase. Mm-hmm. Not a lot, but like two, two times in my life that stick out that I've learned so much from. Mm-hmm. But now, now I'm in a good selfish phase and mm-hmm. I'm never going to apologize for this good selfish phase. Good. Good. Um, but when I was good selfish, I would apologize. I felt bad for that too. So we just, it goes back to like assessing, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And not, not being so hard on yourself with feeling guilty Mm-hmm. for taking care of yourself first mm-hmm. or like making yourself a priority mm-hmm. but it shouldn't it shouldn't be at the detriment of others agreed so those are agreed. but then also knowing you're not responsible for others too 
God damn, yes. Fine last line, you know. Yeah, because you're you <laughs> like, I can't you I'm not forcing you to be here. No. And I'm, I'm also I can't want something more than you do. Right? So like is it selfish for me to um, you know, set a boundary because you are somebody that's constantly, say for example, choosing the wrong men and they're constantly screwing you over and you're in these really bad situations where you know you shouldn't be in, but then I need to like kind of be mindful of my energy and how I'm spending my energy. So I need to kind of, you know, set that boundary there. Is that selfish? Some would say, some would say. Some would say, right? But yeah. what, but I, I, I have myself to protect and I, I, I have my own things that I need to achieve and I can't just constantly be there. And I'm, you know, like I can't just constantly be there and listen to you if you're not changing your life, right? You're just complaining, <laughs> right? I think if you just lead with love, that's all that matters. I, I love, I still love, I still love people from my past. I still love my yeah. past, you know, like those are experiences that you never, you have to be grateful for it because you wouldn't be still here today if it wasn't for them. You wouldn't have the knowledge that you have. So all selfishness aside and all that, like love is love. love and is nothing, love. nothing can conquer that. Exactly. So if you lead with love, even if you've hurt someone, you know, people are going to get hurt in this life mm -hmm. that we live. Mm -hmm. Some things That's are unpreventable. True. It's true. So, yeah. Question three. This is your last one? This is my last one. During this, this, during this pandemic, we've been forced to slow down. What has been coming up for you during the stillness? So I know you're back at work, but you took some time off before then. So I don't know if any anything has arisen that you had to deal with. Any emotions? Yeah. Do you want to share with us? I don't like you right now. Um, no, no, no. So I was always at work. It was, mm -hmm. yeah, I just, I just got back to work after being off for a month. Mm -hmm. But even when COVID hit, I was still just going into work, mm -hmm. like regular. Um, I was being a bit, I was getting chastised, actually, like at work, especially by my staff who like, mm -hmm. I wasn't expressing any fears or anything like that. Excuse me, sorry. I was really just going in like it was just like a regular day. Mm -hmm. And people didn't understand why is this guy just mm -hmm. happy or whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to be positive. Like someone has to be, mm -hmm. you know, and even if I was some sort, had some sort of fear inside, mm -hmm. I wasn't going to show that because I, I trust, I trust the above, right? Like there's a process, there's, there are things going on we're not aware of. So why mm -hmm. worry or think the worst? Mm -hmm. um, but I had to, I had to take some time off like the week of my birthday even to, uh, because I just, I just hit a low, I hit a rock. Mm -hmm. I hit, a, I hit a bottom that I, th I never thought that I would hit. Mm -hmm. um, and it stemmed from like a relationship that I shared with somebody and um, just, uh, again, another moment in my life where I was like really hard on myself mm -hmm. for things that are, were sort of out of my control. Some things were in my control, some things weren't. And I was trying to fix the situation. I was mm -hmm. trying to fix my mistakes let's say mm -hmm. and be better you know um but the opportunity that i took kind of backfired mm. and, and i think the universe showed me that you know what eris that's not where you're supposed to be mm -hmm. you should have you should have never been there in the first place you should have allowed it to to end when it did and just leave mm -hmm. it be. um so the 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 backlash that i got and the, the slap in the face or, or you know so to speak really affected me and hit mm -hmm. me hard. Mm -hmm. So I hit a rock bottom. I needed some time to recollect, mm -hmm. you know, my, my thoughts and my emotions, remind myself of who I am, why I'm here, mm -hmm. um, and the good things. Mm -hmm. And to remind myself, same thing, you know, stuff. Go. Um, your questions kind of connect to things we've already spoken about in this mm -hmm. entire conversation, which is mm -hmm. like reminding yourself that there's more to come, better to come. Mm -hmm. And there's no fear in that. There should be none. Like, mm -hmm. in fact, get ready for that. Mm -hmm. Because if that wasn't meant to be, imagine what is meant to be. Mm -hmm. We're just getting started. I truly feel, Michelle, I'll share this with you. Mm -hmm. And I spent my birthday with you. So I'll, I'll, you, get, you get to be privy to this. You know, you're privy. Mm -hmm. you're, you were there. You're physically there celebrating with me. Mm -hmm. 
um, I felt like my life started that day. Like I truly feel like life started that day. And anything prior to that day, I don't think I was really living. I think I was going through things. I was learning, 30 years of learning. And then that 31 mark is when life... So basically, you had your butterfly moment at that moment. And you were just kind of caterpillar, cocoon, and now butterfly is where you are. There you go. I, was, I texted you earlier. I was talking to my mom or with my mom. I don't like to say talking to someone. I like saying talking with because it's a two-way uh, thing, right? Or three-way, whatever. Um, she even said, she's like, boy, you sound different. Like, you sound... No. Really mm-hmm. but, but she also said, like, you're not saying much. When I, I'm usually, like, a talker, but I mm-hmm. said, Ma, Ma, I'm in this ob- observation stage of my life. I'm just watching and listening. Now. Mm-hmm. I'm just chilling. Mm-hmm. I'm sick. Because I get it. I get it. Now. Mm-hmm. I get it. I'm not into talking anymore. I want to use what, I, what I've learned thus mm-hmm. far and mm-hmm. put it to good use and give back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not going to stop for anybody or anything. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you come to terms with that and accept that for yourself and say mm-hmm. that's the deal that you've made mm-hmm. you're like okay you know what your mission is mm-hmm. because I was ready to give up the show I was ready to like end it I didn't want to be here anymore. Mm-hmm. I truly felt like this is it for me there's mm-hmm. no need to live anymore mm-hmm. that's how hard I hit and then what changed your mind I started to think about things that I had already been through in life Mm -hmm. and made it out of Mm -hmm. and thought about like, you know, if I can make it out of that, then this is just another Mm -hmm. day, day in the life. And Mm -hmm. I had a lot of support systems around me, thankfully, family, friends, Mm -hmm. um, just reconnecting me. And I, I always feel like when someone comes into your life in that way, in that supportive way, I think that that's God. That's God talking to you Mm -hmm. through those people. Yeah, I agree. You know, so I had those support systems and I was ready to get back to work. And yeah, just things have been just just going this way. Mm -hmm. And it's really, if you change this, Mm -hmm. you'll see, you'll see things really adjust around you. But if you get stuck in here Mm -hmm. and based on here, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, you could, you could fall. You could fall so you could just keep falling, mm-hmm. and with no with no end, mm-hmm. no rock, no bottom to even hit. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you decided otherwise. Yeah, I was fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> I was fucked up, but it's all good though. It's it's really good. Mm-hmm. God is God is good. Amazing all the time. One hundred percent. We have to keep going. We have to keep going. We have to keep going. I, I realize that there, I have more to live for than I thought I did. Mm-hmm. And I think we all need to assess, you know, our environments and the people in our lives and see and ourselves and recognize, like, who, you know, what do I have? I have, mm-hmm. I have more than I think I do. Yeah. We're Whether, just obsessed about what we don't have. Say that again? We just, uh, we're just obsessed about what we don't have. Fuck. I know. Fuck what we don't have. Like, I know. I know. We, don't, we don't have it for a reason. Or we had it once and don't have it for a reason. Or very, very I think good. that also, too, is just like we don't have it because maybe we haven't learned how to deal with what we actually want. To appreciate what we already yeah, have. Makes, we're not at that level to receive what we actually want. And that's why we're still here. So That, that, kind that of, too. But so also, bring it back to kind of like what and into an action I know, of like what can I do to kind of get myself closer to that? as opposed to obsessing over the fact that I don't have it. But also remember what you already have. Yeah. That has to be, that's key. A yeah. lot of us forget what's right in front of our faces, what we own, what we see, what we're able to do on a day-to-day basis that maybe someone in this world can't. Mm-hmm. I can open my fridge and have a full fridge of food, access mm-hmm. to it, and maybe never eat. Why? I can eat. We're all like Uber something. Because <laughs> I want... Something else. Something right? else. Something else. Uh, access. Options. Because I have the privilege of making that choice. Yes. Right? I have the privilege to love again. Mm-hmm. Something, something failed. Exactly. Exactly. And, you and keep a it prayer, going. A prayer that I pray sometimes too is I thank God for my big heart. 
and mm. I ask him to help me hold it because sometimes it feels so heavy and so big and mm. when it pains a lot I tell him thank you so much for this big part that I can even feel this pain because I know this pain will give me purpose to help other people that feel this way but I know that even though I feel this pain because my heart's so big it's like the happiness I feel I feel it's I feel like I enjoy it more than other people because my heart is so expansive so I thank him for that and it seems like a curse when you're in a downtime because it just seems a lot more intense because your heart is so big, right? Yes. But yes. when you have a good moment, it's you hurt like, more. You hurt so more. It's good too, right? It's intense yes. too. The happy moments are intense too. So yeah, the hurt and the happy moments. Mm -hmm. Like I, I was sitting in hurt, mm -hmm. not just not just in this time, in this time in my life, like recently, mm -hmm. but in life, I, I re like this helped me realize a lot of things that. Mm -hmm in my life like and one of those things was where um i was sitting in my pain for a while i was embracing it too much mm -hmm. like it's as if i didn't want to experience anything new or happiness mm -hmm. but it's like no I, I like what you said again like you know what you don't want now mm -hmm. you see what you you shouldn't be a part of mm -hmm. so now let's focus on the things you do want like you got to go through what you don't want in order to figure out what you do want. And, and like, you, and like, you know, you, we feel things such so much more cause we're creatives and we're so sensitive and like, look at all the beautiful things that come out of that. Right. Like, mm. you know, look at all the music that you've written. The butterfly. Written, it's the right? butterfly. Effect. The butterfly moment. And, yeah. and that butterfly moment maybe might even just be enough to show another caterpillar of like the process of what it takes to go through the cocoon. And that might just even be your purpose in that. And that might just be all that it is and that's it. Or just know that you are capable of like enduring that pain and that you become stronger from that too. Right. So. Are you in a butterfly moment? Um, yet or now? I don't know if I would limit myself to say that because I think that I would say maybe I'm like going through like caterpillar cocoon butterfly, caterpillar cocoon butterfly. Yeah. So I think that right now I'm in like a, I'm in like a cocoon phase, yeah. of growing. Um, but the beautiful thing is it's not entirely painful. So like it's, I'm not emerging yet, but I don't know. I'd say I'm a beautiful cocoon because I'm, I'm also appreciating where I am right now. And I'm very grounded in that moment too. Yeah. I wouldn't say, I, I like that. I like that. Cause uh, that kind of, that kind of sparked uh, a thought when you said that, I don't feel like, especially for us, if we become a butterfly tomorrow, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean there isn't a cocoon that we don't have to go back into in order mm -hmm. to come back mm -hmm. out as like a bigger butterfly with bigger wings or whatever. Like mm -hmm. it's a mm -hmm. it's an ongoing yeah tra transition for like yeah. That. So I'm glad that you defined it that way. I look at it the same way. I like the angel wings. Like I used to say mm -hmm. that like I don't have my wings in, mm -hmm. and I true I was stuck in that. And if if you saw what I was going through. It, it mirrored what I spoke out loud. Like the tongue is very powerful, right? Mm -hmm. You know this. Mm -hmm. But I feel like my wings are, uh, are growing back like mm -hmm. organically from the back, like not like being just given back to me. I'm growing mm -hmm. new wings. Mm -hmm. So you're not at you're, the cocoon phase or stage that you're in. You're not healing. You're, you're, you're preparing. You're, you're I'm preparing. preparing. I'm in a preparation cocoon, not a healing cocoon, which is like, I'm still doing my healing, but it's not coming from a place of like trauma. It's coming from a place of wanting to be better for the next step for, for the, the next, next step. step right. So I'm just like on top of everything that I need to do to get where I want to be. Right. That's it. So before we end this, I just want to acknowledge you and all that you're doing. Um, you know, you're going to work and you're making music and you're writing and you're facilitating these conversations, doing podcasts. You're doing the most. So I really appreciate how you facilitate the conversations. I feel like you know how to pull out of people. And I feel like you want to look and really, you really want to see people for who they are. And that's something that I really look for. Like I look to be seen. So I appreciate you for, for seeing me and trying to see me properly in the way that maybe I want to be seen as well. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you. Thank you for your words. <laughs> I appreciate that you are right, and I care about you. You're a person that you know you exist, and you're a woman, and you're just a strong individual. I see that 
and I appreciate you. I appreciate your existence, you know, and I, I see the support that you give me as well. Mm -hmm. I want, I, I don't just want you to, you or anybody to see, you know, you have to see that in yourself. Forget about what I'm trying to pull out of you. Like, I want you to pull it out of yourself. And I just mm -hmm. want to create the space mm -hmm. to provide people, to give to people so that they can do that. Because when I was younger, the, the spaces were limited. Mm -hmm. You know, we have, we, we're so advanced now. We could do, we could, we're do, like, it's so weird that we're doing this right now. Mm -hmm. You're, you're there. Mm -hmm. Like before COVID, I thought like my, in, my, my conversation with Michelle on the show would be like in person. Mm -hmm two mics in front of our faces mm -hmm. and whatever, but we're unlimited, you know, mm -hmm. we could do this and still mm -hmm. get it done and hopefully mm -hmm. promote, promote that good energy. So mm -hmm. I appreciate the acknowledgement. I do care about you and uh, just thank you. Thank you for just being you. I appreciate you too. This is great. Yay. This is part one though. We're going to be, yeah. doing, we're going to do another one. Yeah. With wine. <laughs> so for those who are just tuning into the, to the podcast, like er, Every other episode has a guest on it for the most part. And then those episodes in between, it's just Eris talking to everyone solo, uh, solo dolo. So if you're just tuning in for the first time, just be aware of that. I want to welcome everybody to the Who and How Club if this is your first time. Michelle, one of the Rampagers, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, you know, being a part of this conversation today and just when, you know, just, just being down. Just like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah. You gotta do it now oh here's one thing i wanted to bring up or address on this sure. episode, on this episode and i wanted to ask you what uh like a little question okay um, in in april it's nothing crazy but in, <laughs> april, in, in april i attempted to present like a new series uh or segment sorry to the show uh called april rules mm -hmm. instead of april fools i wanted to focus on rules that uh either people i have on the show uh, live by or have lived by or even mm -hmm. myself, even myself now because April was so crazy we didn't get to cover that so I want to reintroduce that segment starting in May and maybe focus it, it, it's not it doesn't have to be May rules or June rules we're just going to have yeah. a rule segment. what are our rules yeah so yeah. is there a rule in your life that before we leave you know something yeah. that you believe with the people maybe a rule that you have lived by that has helped you function and progress in your life that is you know just a rule that you've lived by um i the first thing that comes to mind is i don't do anything unless i'm like certain about it mm. so if i'm like i don't know like maybe should i like i don't make decisions in that place like until mm. i know for certain i don't do it mm. and that comes with like guys jobs like business decisions anything if I feel uncertainty, I need to still sit in prayer and think about it um, and, and move to that space where I feel really sure about what I'm doing. Certain. Certainty. Certainty. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. You need to have confidence in that. Where yeah. some people just kind of like, oh, just do it now and you're like, whatever. Think about it later. Yeah. And there's a difference between being uncertain and being anxious about it because it's really important. Mm -hmm. Right? Like you might be anxious and, and feel nervous because it's really important to you. But that doesn't mean that you're uncertain about it, right? So there's a difference there. What about you? What's one rule? Just one. Uh, right now, yeah. a, rule, a rule that I would say, um, I guess rule two uh, right now would have to be keep going. Mm. You know, just keep going. Like survive another day. If you mm. just sleep. I think that was rule one. I can't even remember rule one. April was such a blur up until my birthday. So know. so let's start with rule one. Eris's rule one for the mm -hmm. Who and How Club today, which is a great foundation to have and set for yourself. First thing to have in, in on your mind is to keep going. Mm -hmm. No matter what rules come after this and what happens, remember rule number one will be to keep going. That's a beautiful first rule. Just don't stop. Just keep going. Just keep going. Even if you take a little pause, it's not a full blown stop. Because mm -hmm. when you put something on pause, you've got to push play eventually. Yeah. So yeah. keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep moving. Be the movement that you want to be or see in this world mm -hmm. or in this life. 
never stop for anybody or for anything, for any trauma, for any, any, you know, any roadblock. Yeah. You just, you just run through that shit. Mm -hmm. You just keep going. And that's what I did recently in that stuff that I went through. I kept going. Mm -hmm. I kept sleeping. I kept praying. I kept writing. Mm -hmm. I kept, you know, burning my sage and mm -hmm. rebuking and shedding my skin. I kept going. I didn't give up. Mm -hmm. So if there was something that I wanted to leave with you and any, everyone listening. That's amazing. Keep, keep going. Keep going. Rule number one. Rule number one. Keep going. Just keep swimming. Keep swimming. Yeah. Keep, keep running. Yeah. Keep swimming. Keep yeah. writing. Yeah. Keep good thinking. That's a good keep, keep feeling. Keep feeling. Keep loving. Keep, keep forgiving. <laughs> good one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this has been the Who and How Club. It's your boy, Aris Dejan, and I'm here with... Michelle. Michelle, what's your, what's your IG and stuff? I'm going to put it on the video. Trantastic. Here. Trantastic, with a, a one instead of an I. Want to spell it out for the people? T-R-A-N-T-A-S-T-1-C. Okay. Trantastic. And I'll put it on, uh, on the video there, on a little yeah. green card. So follow Michelle. Follow the Who and How Club on all social media. You can find us on any podcast platform if you want to hear this episode, episode 23 in the can. You are the Who and How Club. I am the Who and How Club. We are the Who and How Club. Without you, without me, there is no we. And this has been the, the podcast. It's been real. <laughs> See you guys later. Okay, bye.